morning, everybody. I'm Paul Peebold, Irvington Historical Society, and uh, we're going to have a little fun with classicism. But first, I'd like to tell you, we are holding our ice cream social. We're calling it socially distanced ice cream social this year. Um, hope everyone can see that. Um, you can get some great deals on ice cream here at the Bonnet Thompson Center today and tomorrow from 1 to, from 1 to 4 p.m. So we're going to be gearing up for that. Uh, great day to have ice cream. It's going to be a little more cool than it usually is in August. And we're not going to have the live music. We're just encouraging you to come and support us. You can get a flight of ice cream for $15. That's four flavors. Um, you can order this online through our website. And uh, so without further ado, let's get on to our, to our class for today. Because I promised a quiz. I'm thinking everyone can see this here. This is a drawing of the building behind me, the Bonnet Thompson Center, and it's full of all these wonderful classical details. We're going to talk a little bit about classicism today. Classicism, of course, in architecture, refers to the, the culture of the ancient Mediterranean, Greece and Rome in particular, and these styles of architecture which were popular in around from 700 BC until about 400 AD. Uh, and then of course, they've been revived various times in our Bonnet Thompson Center. Uh, behind me is a great example of that. Uh, the, the building is completely classical in style. It, it's not really modeled after an ancient building, but most certainly ancient libraries probably had classical details like this building has on it. And that provides that cultural link. Uh, when you go in this building, you feel as though you're going to learn something important. And that was the whole point of classicism. It had that sort of stamp of authority to it that's been used in, in various ways, to be sure, uh, in different time periods. But I've numbered all these different things on this uh, diagram here. And I will be uh, posting still pictures of this uh, along with the Facebook post a little bit later, but you can see I've got them all numbered. And um, first of all, you can see all the different kinds of moldings that there are. I have 10 different things labeled on this, on the uh, building here. And, and they, they vary from um, egg and dart, which is number one. Of course, the volute of the capital of the building, uh, the capital of the column rather, which is Ionic in style. There were primarily the three kinds of columns, Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. And our building is Ionic. Then there's a band of what we call Guillaume molding, which looks like a basket weave. Then another layer of egg and dart. And then a very thin molding called bead and reel because it looks appropriately like a bead and reel. Then there is a band around the neck of the column that's called palmettes. Then flanking the column, there's a kind of a flat column that's called an ante. And indeed, when we have a building like this, we, we say that it, that it is die style in antis, which means two columns flanked by those big sturdy piers called ante. Now you'll see um, also an arch over the main door when we pan up here in just a moment. It's called an archivolt. That's number eight. And number nine refers to the grid around the windows, or forming the windows, which is called a clathris. And then lastly, number ten is a keystone. And here's your key, by the way, so you can prepare for the quiz. By the way, I, I do that myself. Um, it's red because it's the first marker that I found. Um, not, not bad for freehand, you know. Not, not going to make any, any uh, art displays out of it, but uh, good enough for what we're doing. Let's go ahead and pan up. This is the main entrance of the Bonnet Thompson Center. There's the doorway. There's some of that clathrous window treatment it forms a diagonal grid we're going to go way up and there is the column top so you can see 
above the scroll of the of the column capital egg and dart below it a circular band of egg and dart and you can also see the the palmette some of the other moldings in there around that that column and uh, the, the, our building is really magnificent for the the quality of the classical detail the the architect jesse johnson who designed this building uh, was really a master of classicism I'm going to pan down a little bit more here. You can see the keystone, and you can see the archivolt molding. Now, archivolt, um, that is an arched architrave molding. So an architrave molding is what is above the column, and you can see it's a band of three or four different moldings that form kind of a bed. Well, when you take that molding and arc it into a curve, it's called an archivolt. And then you can see the clathrus molding. Now, in, in ancient times, uh, window glass was pretty much non-existent, uh, but you had to have some way to keep people out of, you know, the temple or the treasury, what have you. And so they devised this grid, this, this diagonal grid and in uh, modern, more recent classical buildings, uh, that's been emulated as a window pattern because, because, of course, glass is plentiful. No problem getting glass uh, in the early 20th century. Uh, so, but we wanted to imitate that classical style. So that is, that is what the clathrus is. It's that diagonal grid. Some of the beautiful moldings again. There's the carving. We'll go on up. There's the pediment, which is the triangular part, over the top, which forms the top of the portico of the building. Beautifully carved, all Indiana limestone. Now, there you have it. There is the ante with the three round discs on its neck and the, the beautifully carved uh, classical capital, the ionic capital of our building here at Bonnet Thompson Center. Um, one of the wonderful things about this building, being away from downtown, the stonework was never sandblasted or pressure washed, and we weren't subject to a lot of the coal soot uh, that downtown buildings were. So uh, fortunately, the, the stonework is still very, very crisp on this building, which is, which is a, real, uh, a real great uh, thing for us here at the Bonnet Thompson Center. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to close out our lesson for today. If you can join us at the Bonnet Thompson Center for some ice cream, um, it'll be packaged to take home. It's been prepared by a certified food handler. Um, so no concerns there. Uh, you can support us and you can keep the tradition of the ice cream social going, even though we, we won't have the live music. We'll, we'll look for that next year or as soon as we can. And, uh, we wish you a great weekend. I'll post those, those uh, still photos of my drawings so that you can look back over this video and, uh, and you can review. Um, I did say there was a quiz. Every, everyone, everyone passes. Everyone gets an A. Congratulations. So we'll sign off for now. Everyone have a great weekend.